Did you use the terms for pastors and elders synonymously last Sunday night? Yes. And I'll show you that God does twice. And I think that that's a, a, some, a little piece of the puzzle that a lot of people have never figured out, that elders, well, there's several, someone asked me about this in the lobby, and I'll tell you what I told them because I didn't um, add it in tonight. Um, they said, we're from a Baptist background. I said, well, I'm an ordained Baptist minister. Yes. Uh, that's, yay, it's good to meet you. And they said, well, we didn't have elders in our church. I said, oh, yeah, you did. You had one. Uh, the pastor, because the term pastor, bishop, overseer, elder, all of those terms are used interchangeably and synonymously. Now, they all talk about a different function that, that the person, the overseer, oversees. The elder, it speaks of the the aged, like in Hebrew, the word elder is zakain, means white hair. It means that they're a wise, seasoned, you know, godly type of person. Pastor speaks of shepherding. And so an elder is to shepherd, an elder is to be wise, godly, and an elder is to oversee. And so they're interchangeable terms. But the problem is that, that uh, there's never an example in the New Testament of a local church that only had one. See, that's the one thing that, that uh, if I could be so bold to say the Baptists do anything wrong, is they don't realize that, that there's always a plurality of elders in every local New Testament church. It was never a solo. And there's a, there's a great benefit, as Calvary experiences with the 14 elders here, the plurality of elders, some labor in the doctrine and teaching, and others are primarily laboring and overseeing, but there's always a plurality. Does Let's God use the terms for pastors and elders synonymously in Scripture? That's a clearer way to say it. So take your Bibles and let's look at the two key passages. Um, all of us who are believers are to be associated with a local church. In fact, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says that not only are we supposed to associate, we are to never forsake when that gathering of the body occurs. We are to never uh, miss the collecting together of the body of Christ. And so church is huge to New Testament believers. But Within churches, the, the polity of the church, the church government, the, the way that the church operates is supposed to be reflective of the Bible. And so whenever we're talking about the organization of the church, instead of saying, well, our denomination has, da -da, it's always better to go back, just like in research, to a primary document. So there are two key passages that describe who is to lead the church. And the first one uh, actually I'm going in reverse order. We'll go to 1 Peter 5, and then we'll back into Acts chapter 20. But Peter, who, of course, uh, I mean, the spokesman for the apostles, the one that, that Jesus allowed to make that great confession that, that uh, the church would be built upon Jesus Christ, Peter says this at the end of his life, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And, and I want you to notice how, how synonymously he links together three terms. The elders, which are among you, I exhort, who am a fellow elder. Now, there, I'm not talking about Roman Catholicism tonight, but did Peter think he was the Pope? He had no premonitions of that. He said, I'm, he was writing to, he was writing to local church pastors. Most local churches, all local churches in the early period were under 100 people. Um, Paul pastored less than 100 people in Corinth for a year and a half. We know that archaeologically. So there were scattered all over the place local church pastors. Peter is working with the ones in modern-day Turkey, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And so all of the local church pastors were with him, fellow elders. But then notice what he says, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd. Here's the second term. So these elders are also shepherd, the flock of God which is among you, serving as, and there is the third term. These are, in one little two-verse you know, snippet of the Scripture, every term God uses. <clears throat> I'm going to have to excuse that. I did an outdoor funeral yesterday, and I'm, everything is uh, <clears throat> getting cold here. I think... Uh, too bad the microphone picks everything up, but you'll just have to bear with all the uh, nasal irrigation I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but all of the terms for the, the 
uh, teaching and leading of the church are in this little section. Elders, and, and this is where the Presbyterian church comes from, presbuteroi, uh, the, the presbytery, you might have heard Presbyterian church. Poimain, this is the word we looked at this morning, uh, the shepherding, uh, and, and that's translated most frequently in English, pastor. Poimain, this is pastor. Uh, a pastor is exactly synonymous with a shepherd. That's all pastor means, is shepherd. And uh, if you want to, uh, you know, remind yourself that instead of saying that, that he is pastoring, say he is shepherding, because that's what the word means. And it, and it totally ties to taking care of the health of sheep. The primary role of, of the leaders of the church is, as we'll see down here, is to guard and feed and, and nurture the flock, the, the entire sanctification process. And then, here's the overseer part. This is, and you've heard of the Episcopalian church. Now, they've all gotten away from their original moorings, and the Episcopalian church is basically Roman Catholic uh, British Anglicans that moved to America. So it's, it's just kind of like a form of Roman Catholicism um, with all the problems that would have. But, but the term that Episcopalians get and Presbyterians get and that Baptist pastors come from are all synonymous leaders of the church. And they are to serve not by compulsion in the end of this verse, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. So there's a calling and a spiritual prompting. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 20. And, you know, the, the whole reason I'm circling and marking and reminding you of this is, did you know that it's like going, what takes normal Bible study to the next level is actually engaging in it as, as you're being taught. In fact, it would be good to wear out your Bible, to overmark the pages so that when your wife says, what can I get you for Christmas, she'll say, you need a new Bible. You know, usually when you find people whose Bibles are falling apart, they're, as you've heard, their lives are not. So if you mark those terms in Peter, 1 Peter 5, and if you um, mark these terms in Acts 20, you will now have encompassed every passage in the Bible that speaks to the plurality of elder leadership within the church. And by the way, elders are never solo. That's why, even though I'm an a ordained Baptist minister, one of the weaknesses of Baptist churches is they have one elder. He's the pastor. All New Testament churches, all, I mean, there are none that are described that don't have a plurality. That's what the oi is here, the, the plural of the presbytery, the elders. It's always a plurality, never a solo, because solo pastoring, uh, one pastor with no fellow elders to balance the giftedness and even the, the burdens and, and, and desires and direction is very, very in history dangerous. And so it's a plurality of elders. But now look at Acts 20. And this, this is uh, Paul's charge, you probably know, to, to the, the Ephesian elders. They came down to the port city of Miletus right here. And Miletus, if you ever get to go to the Holy Land, is one of the best preserved um, little spots. You can still sit in the actual theater looking out at the port where Paul would have sailed in. It's still there. But from Miletus, Paul's sailing. He stops there. He sent to Ephesus. He called for the elders. Now, there's the first term. Remember, there are three of them. The elders which is presbyteroi of the church, and now keep going down to verse 28. So the context of 17 is he's summoned these men, and, and they're, did you catch I said men? That's the second thing. Never is, it, never is it singular, and never is it anything but a gender-specific role. Men, always, elders, pastors, overseers, always. See, that, and our, I mean... It's like 21st century American churches are detached from this. I mean, it's almost like, just like everybody's ditching the Bible to have the electronic version, sadly, American Christian churches is ditching the Bible. And that's, that's part of the whole idea nowadays of not being authoritarian and having absolutes. We just kind of do what works best. We're very pragmatic, and that's not biblical. But he sent for... Uh, the Ephesian elders, and it's plural again, it's the presbytery, 
Verse 28, take heed to yourselves. Now Paul's charging them, and he's given his testimony. He says, night and day I've labored among you, and you know it's one of the most beautiful sections uh, of the Scripture. But verse 28 is relevant to our point. Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock. Remember we were talking this morning? This, this, this idea of shepherding, shepherds, flock, sheep, is, is the fabric of the Bible talking about us. We, Jesus said, you are my sheep, but we're his flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you, here's the second term, overseers. But I, did you notice the emphasis in verse 28? Do elders just one day say, hmm, well, I've tried everything else, been a little professional golfer, I'm going to be a, an elder now. No. D- did you see it's the Holy Spirit? That It is a calling, it is a giftedness, it, it is something that the Spirit of God orchestrates for his church. And, and what's amazing is for those who serve to realize, especially when they have the, the long hours and the hard um, you know, duty of, of what they have to do for ministering the flock, that it's the Holy Spirit that makes us oversee. And to, and there's the third term, shepherd. So always, these three are synonymous terms. They, they reflect, elder speaks of the character, overseer speaks of the, of the oversight, the ruling part. Shepherd speaks of the nurturing and leading of the sheep and the, the personal, relational part. But all three of them are synonymously describing those who, who shepherd the church. So uh, that, that is um, critical. Okay, now the next question. So the first one, question one, does God use the terms for pastors and elders synonymously? Yes, uh, because God does in the Word, and, and we should see that. By the way, it, you know, not to belabor a point, but we had considerable discussion a couple of weeks ago in the last few months over education, this and that. Did you know that uh, these people, as far as we know, were never educated to pastor other than being nurtured and discipled from the Word? Did you know the key is not how many degrees you have on your wall, but whether you love the Lord and love to shepherd people, whether you're called to do it? and gifted to do it, and that's critical. Nowadays, it's almost like if you get your degree, you've got to be good. Mm-mm. I taught in seminary too long to know that. There are a lot, of, uh, a lot of my students. I remember my first 100 students at the Master's Seminary. Do you know how many of them are not in the ministry anymore? See, it's if, if you're called of God, then you, you are not daunted by the challenges, whether of you know, the false teaching or the wolves or whatever and you stick with it.